We are born of the poverty of the vast potential. Of vast potential. We are an extraordinary center of need. That great need is our immense lack of all the completeness, ever expanding completeness that God is. We start life with a, an incredible shortage of awareness. Uh, most of us, nearly all, have the entire memory wiped as we come into birth, conception. We have the incredible experience of starting with a blank slate. But with a potential to respond to what we from then experience. It's a bit like the popular misunderstanding of meditation, as if it's a pursuit of clearing the mind completely of all thought and just launching into being. Not surprisingly, such brings an extraordinary emptiness. The whole conviction that conventional reality is not true reality at all. That true reality is void of all that we were so attached to in conventional reality. It's the experience of being born with no parents at all. A transcendence over all fascination and imagination. A seeing of all such as complete delusion, an experience of a new birth, completely dead in the water. A triumphant death of self, now to be experienced. It's the absolute antithesis of life. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And by life I mean seeing patterns in what is. Finding some Pleasant and some unpleasant. Building a desire for that which is pleasant, good in a sort of primitive sense, and an aversion to that which is not pain and violence and destruction and so on. Life is the gravitation to ongoing life and experience. an orientation towards that which is a joy, pleasant, peaceful, good, happy, healthy, vibrant, and an aversion to that which is the opposite of such. If you don't have this state, you are quite simply dead. There is no life by 
definition. It is certainly the end of suffering, but it's the end of joy too. Obviously, you value nothing. You are utterly detached from all that is. That's called death. Birth into this life in the transitory world of um, time, space, matter, this ongoing um, experience has an amazing order, but the order keeps adjusting, changing, developing in one way or another. A bit like conversation, a bit like thinking, very much like both, very close indeed. One thing leads to another. It's anything but this continuously um, conceived perfect state of uh, no change. Life is change. If you're seeking an equilibrium constancy um, an invariability you are by definition seeking non-life the lack of life now when we're born we are born with this incredible potential to enter into life and um, we start to make sense, you may say, make our own sense of the experiences that keep coming to us, that keep triggering our potential. And maturity um, is moving to a state of wisdom in that we gain an ability to move towards the good and away from the evil, the bad. We find that we love health and hate illness, love pleasure and hate pain, um, seek joy and happiness and try to avoid loss and despair. And wisdom is getting better at knowing how to achieve such. Happiness turns on our ability to move towards such and such to move towards us. <laughs> and what we're thinking becomes major in this as we reflect on what we're experiencing and have experienced. In short, we mature, we grow up. In the world terms, we become an adult. In spiritual terms, we become a fully able member of the host of them. Where what we come to value through the experience here in the phenomenal world where what we come to value
is all that is truly valued from the point of view of things like joy and peace and hope and creativity and loving kindness and beauty goodness and what we come to more fully trust to be such. We might attempt to do this by being very much aware of all that's bad and trying to change it. You may find that that is not very successful. It works in that we change what is bad, but we become obsessed with what's bad, and we start to see it everywhere, and we become overwhelmed. It, it, it seems to be the way to work at times, because, for instance, when we have a pain, we remove from the pain as soon as we possibly can. And we try and see what the cause of the pain is, if indeed we're not responding automatically anyway, and then act accordingly and don't try and avoid. The other extreme, we focus on all that is good. My goodness, oh. we become very happy because um, all we're thinking about is what's good. We become very confident of the good, and, um, well, very chirpy, <laughs> very friendly, mm, very helpful. Um, we're like a rich man, whereas concentrating on all that's bad seems to make us so aware of poverty, our own, all that's lacking. You know, I could be a billionaire, I'm only a millionaire. Hmm, what could I do about it? Do you see we're driven by discontent if we look at all that's bad? By definition, I mean, you're not going to be content with what's bad, are you? And if we focus on all that's good, well, we become driven by a joy, a gratitude, a thankfulness. And that, of course, brings joy and peace and hope and love for all that seems to make up this amazing experience of life. So it's not rocket science, is it? If you focus on the bad all the time, you become very negative. You destroy life. If you focus on the good, well, you become very positive. Full of joy and thankfulness and peace and hope and... Hmm, all good. So there are good habits and there are bad habits and we try to cultivate the good. And we hope we're not going to be overtaken by the bad. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We are born children of God. We in our own wisdom and competence are incredibly lacking, but our potential is life eternal to be as God. And, of course, we can't get there without coming to grips with um, what is to be truly valued and what isn't. And it's love and harmony that's to be truly valued. I mean, at least in the degree to which Heaven is not 
uh, harmed, but blessed by our presence. Otherwise we can't be let in, can we? The Jesus teaching is that the kingdom of heaven is actually within you. It's just a hand, it's closer than close. This opportunity. We can enter now. If we've got to a point where we're really teachable. Where we are in a harmony with that which is good, that it may bless us instead of us resisting it, like the plague, which is what we do when we're used to focusing on evil. So we need to be used to focusing on good, whatsoever is good and lovely, so that we know how to relate to the good that we're not trained in how to relate to the evil. Relating to the evil is an endless war. Wars are not good. Look at the 20th century. Wars are not good. It's as simple as that. The world does not prosper in war. So we put ourselves in love instead love and kindness and harmony and concern for the well-being of others, not a desire to have them annihilated. Desire to annihilate evil calls forth a reaction from the evil and you are at war. And sure, the best man wins, but at appalling cost. Appalling cost. And he defines himself to be the best man, simply because he's the one left to write the history. And he moves on to the next war, in whatever dimension that is. Because war is what he knows and what he's become. Don't go down that road. You will not be happy. You will be in a living despair. What's colourful at me referred to as hell. But it's far worse than that. Don't go down that way. All life, by definition, has the potential to embrace life. And life is that pursuit of change that brings goodness, not death, that brings more life, not death. Obviously, anyone could have told you that. Surely they know that. So we are kind to others. In as far as we can be. In as far as it's appreciated. In as far as they're wanting it. And if they're not... They won't hear us. Our words will appear as no value at all. Until they want. And they're not going to want without the need that drives that want. And that need will come quickly. Very quickly. To those that don't want that which is good. But want the harm. And they are left in isolation, in that harm, 
in that need until the need becomes a reality with them and they seek to put it right when they cry out when they realize that somehow it's all wrong instead of all right and then they will hear those who have ears to hear let them hear. Those that don't want to hear are very much in the world. This world where you taste of the fruit of not just good but evil as well. Whereas you can abide in the kingdom of heaven and do, hopefully, while still being here. And the only reason, once you've achieved this state, to remain here is because you want to be on hand, to be a blessing to those that ask, to those that not just want, but realize they want something better than what they have. And they're the ones that hear. But those that are very happy with the path they're on will not hear. Unless that path is what you have to offer. In which case, of course, they'll greet you with absolute joy and fellowship. So we don't pester and bother those that not asking and those that are not seeking they're left until they are wanting when they do realize their want when they do cry out when they do ask when they do seek and they will hear they will have ears to hear when that desperate need becomes a reality to them in the sense that they become conscious of that desperate need and seek solution accordingly because grace has been extended to them in that situation of need by that situation of need such that they may reach out for life If you are still suffering, you are still alive. And that means you still have the opportunity for life eternal. If you have stopped suffering, well, you're probably dead unless you are in the kingdom of heaven. Loving all that is good. All that you understand to be good. Will soon lead you towards all that is good. If you pursue it with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Especially if you personify such and see it as. The lovely people around you. Or your view of God. Because we relate to people, that's the way we first started to relate in the world. Mum's face, the warmth of mum, the sounds of mum. Do you see it all turned on our senses in this transitory world, the senses that we have? And if you sit there and meditate and cut off all connection with your senses, do you know what you experience? That's right, death. Sure, it's a great relief from the pain, but it's not life. The pain is to drive you towards life eternal. The joy of the pain is the transitory life. The experience of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil 
which is in abundance outside of the Garden of Eden, where you are. And we abide in Eden, in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven within us. That's where we abide. And you can do that now. You do it by embracing the love of God. And being embraced by the love of God. The love of God as you see it. You'll soon correct uh, any misunderstanding you have about what that love is and what you truly value. That follows naturally. But if you focus, as the world does, on all that's bad, well, you don't know what's good. You're not filling your consciousness with what's good, but with what's bad. But you're still alive, suffering the bad, constantly handling it and visualizing how to put it right. But then moving on to the next bad. And that's quite depressing. Whereas you need to linger a while on what's good. The good that has been, the good that is, the good that's around you. In other words, you need to focus on the genuine, not the counterfeit. Very simple. There's a lot of words I've made. 27 minutes. <laughs> it's pretty obvious really, isn't it? Think of that which is good. Your best way of taking a hold of that is to thank God for it. Gratitude brings Hope, peace, joy, everything that's spiritually a blessing to you. It's as simple as that. It automatically follows, simply from gratitude, which automatically follows from looking on that which is good and having a practice, a habit of thanking God for it, the personification of what you truly value, that person, your God, thanking him for it, you relate best to people. You see, you learned this early on, you're not relating too well to the sheets that are in the way and the cot that you can't see out of, the light that's too bright and the dark that's too dark. But you're relating very well to the feel of mum and then to the sight of mum, and the taste of mum. You see, it's a person we relate to, not inanimate things. And if you're constantly putting your world right by inanimate objects, possessions, and so on, well, it doesn't meet your needs doesn't meet your needs in the way that a person does. When you visualize God, the personification of all that's of value, you start to personify what you're going to become. And if you worship that, my goodness, it's a transcendence that is eternal. And it's a transcendence that embraces all that is. It's a, a realization of self that is absolutely wonderful. Like living in the perfect family. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Heavenly Father.